that that we have um, we have seen the the lovely uh, work of Georgios. Now we can start properly a new chapter in our lives, a new chapter literally. This is the ninth chapter <laughs> of the motivation. Yes, and it's a long um, work chapter. It's a long chapter. Yes, so be ready, be prepared. Yeah. Um, like 20 pages more or less, yes, and also not today, of course, but from the next lesson, yeah. I would ask you to stay to start to be near a piano because we're going to take turns to play the examples, yes. We, we, ha we have to start to listen to the examples. I will play my part, yes, I have a piano over here, although you can't see it. But Laura, yes, or Georgios, well, mm, you're in the same room, so it's, it's, it's easy, yeah. So we're going to start listening, yes, the example is very important. Okay, let's start. Modulation. Actually, before we start, anyone, do you know what modulation is? Um, I think it's the way we need to change the tonal center. Yes. Very good. That's the modern, uh, when I say modern, yeah, uh, well, we have to, oh, wait a second, just a second. When I say more, I have to check something, eh? sorry. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Everything is fine. Good. No, sorry, I have to check, check something in the sound. Um, yes, that's a modern uh, definition. Yes. And also, when I say modern, is uh, when you, we started to have tonal music and not modal music. Modern music, we, we should, you know, think about up to Renaissance, yeah? Tonal music from Baroque to now, yeah? Uh, although, well, 20th century, we had a lot of tonal music, atonal music, spectral music, but we still use tonality. So... Modulation. You said, okay, let you, you get out of the of the of the key that you started with, but the word modulation refers to what actually? Modes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, because the, the, the just to clarify the the use of the word. Yeah, just just to have it clear yeah the word modulation started as a proper modulation to change from mode to mode yes uh, we saw this not you know very deeply yeah but we, we saw certain examples yeah and when you started with a mod remember the modes how many Four and four under them. Yes. Ah, well, in which time? In which? Ah, very good. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Um, let's say the four and four, the authentic and playful. Yes. The prados de los tetritos and tetrados. Yes. Uh, but. Um, I don't think that Laura saw that. Laura, you didn't say you didn't. Do, okay, good. Well, Laura, but do, Laura, do you know the modes in general? I know like the names of the modes. Yes. But I probably wouldn't be able to write out the modes. Okay, no worries. So let, let's let's do a, a, a like a modern definition. Yes, we have seven modes. Yes, not the one that that for the. Because we saw historically, yes, with Iris and Georgios, yes, uh, 
let's just stay the seven molds, yes. We have the Ionian on C, yes, if you if you bless C to C, you have the Ionian, which is the major scale. D to D, the Dorian. E to E, the Phrygian. F to F, the Lydian. G to G, the Mixolydian. A to A, the Aeolian, or not for minor. B to B, the Locrian. Okay, so if you play the scale, just natural keys, white keys on the piano, C to C, D to D, E to E, yeah? then you have Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Okay, now, until Renaissance times, they, they would start, I mean, each mode was kind of the, you know, each, each mode was unique. Yeah, it had their own important notes. Yes, like the dominant and the tonic in the, in the, in the uh, major key, yeah. Uh, it depends on the mode, it would vary, yes. And they would start, let's say, on a motet, yes, that it was very common during the Renaissance. Yeah, motet comes from mot, yeah, word in French. They would start in one mode, yes, and each mode was related to other modes, yeah. For example, if you we start in Dorian, you would be like connected, let's say, you would with cadence, you do you would modulate. You change from mode to mode. To the Lydian, yeah, the one starts in F. Or to the Aeolian, start your name. Yeah. So we start for example a phrase, okay, in Dorian, all the notes in Dorian, yeah. And then you would modulate, you will start you, you leave the mode Yes, by modulation, I will go to the Lydian. And then from the Lydian, you will modulate again to the Aeolian. And then finally, you will modulate again to the Dorian again, finally. Yeah? Um, the, what you call tonic key, tonic note. Yeah? It's usually called the finalis. Yeah? Finalis in Latin means end. Yeah. That's why it says, you know, when you have in the music sheet, you had uh, um, a la fine or, yeah, so fine, finalis, it's a Latin word. Yeah. Fa in French. Okay. So that's why actually the word modulation comes from there. Okay. Now, the leaving of a mode, then it was transformed the leaving of a key. They never changed. Yeah, they tried to, but never changed. Yeah. So just saying that the, the, the origin of the word comes from there. Yeah, we leave from mode to mode, modulation. Yeah. Uh, they tried to change it to, to tonization, but never worked. Yeah, which is the, would be the proper word, because you leave from a tonic, from a tone, yeah, to another one. Yeah. But the modern sense is what Giorgio said. You leave, yes, the key that you are, and then you go to another one. Now that process is not. It's not very. It's not. It's, it's an important process in music. Yes, not just by. Let's say that you're in C major, yes, and then you use all the the, the chords in C major. And then out of nowhere, you just start to use chords of D major. That's not a proper modulation. Yeah. There's a way to do it. Yes. Because what, what are you doing with you when you're, you know, modulating? You are breaking apart. Yeah. The gravitational center, let's say, that you have established around a, a, a chord. Yes. You break it. And then you reestablish another gravitational center, let's say, around another chord. Yeah. Anyone remembers what what is the best way to do that, to establish, let's say? Okay. Yes, Gergius. Dominant, even better, dominant with the seventh. Why is that? Because, <clears throat> well, which way do I approach it? It has the <clears throat> notes we need. That the right on that it has clarifies that uh, the specific sharp or flat that we have. First of all, the right on not resolve the tonic. 
another thing also. But apart from that, the dominant, the root, wants to resolve the fourth up. And yes. And also, there's only one dominant with a minor seventh, only one dominant uh, in every key. Only one major with a minor seventh in every key. That's the dominant. It's true. Yes, it is. Yes. But let's go a little bit of what you said about the triton. The dominant seventh has a triton, but why that those two notes, yes, that made that triton? For example, if you're in C major, G, B, D, F, the triton is B and F. Because, well, the B is not B flat, which is the first flat we would have. The if next. you go to the, exactly, to the neighbor, yeah, because if you're in C, uh, two neighbor keys are G major and F major. So fifth mm -hmm. going up, fifth going down. Yes. But you don't have B flat and you don't have F sharp. You have B natural and F natural. There you go. So the quickest way, dominant seventh. Yeah. And you could say the seventh uh, degree as well, which it is, but it doesn't have the root of the dominant that wants to resolve up. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. So for all those reasons, yes, the quickest way to establish, yes, a key is via the dominant. And that's why, in all, for example, classical, yeah? Classical pieces, you have tonic, dominant, dominant, dominant. But that demands time as well. Not by putting one chord on the other one, tonic, dominant, tonic, that, that's it. Yeah, we have established the key. You need time. That's why we have prolongational progressions, yes, to establish that gravitational center around a tonic, yes? And then, therefore, we need the cadences and the closest and the cadences to reaffirm the key we are, the, in which we are, yes? How many cadences do we have? I'm not yes. sure. I will say, I will name them. Okay, there you go. The half, the perfect, <clears throat> the authentic, the deceptive. Then I don't know, do we continue? Do we say imperfect is another cadence? Do we say... That is a more, yeah, you have perfect authentic cadence, you have authentic cadence, which can be also named imperfect cadence. Yeah. Like what if we do, what if we finish in first inversion? Who finish with a soprano not on the tone. Exactly, perfect. You call them differently. But um, let's say that you have authentic cadences, 5 1, yeah, dominant mm -hmm. tonic. Half cadences, yes, as you say, when you end up on the, on, the, on the dominant, yeah, and then you have the set cadence when the dominant doesn't go to the tonic, it goes another chord. And we saw that we have to go, go to the six or to the Fourth, in first inversion, and we have discussed why. Yes, uh, the difference between you know going to the six and going to the fourth in first inversion. Yes, and then actually we have the plagal cadence, but it doesn't have the proper um, not the proper the 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 the, the um, acoustic relationship. Let's say that the dominant has. Yes, that's why Schoenberg disregards that cadence, saying, look, it, it's more related to the church more than other thing. Yes, yeah? so acoustically, um, it's, it's not that important. Yes, or not that efficient, yes, would be the correct term, to reaffirm, yeah, at one center. Good. And then that is, that is how we establish the key. Yes, when we want to get out of the key, well, we need to do exactly the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, now we're going to go to the book. Buckle up, because we are going to have like three pages of pure Schoenberg <laughs> explanation, very poetically, yes. Wonder how present Schumber like Schumber style, okay? Of what a modulation is. So be ready, brace yourselves. Okay, 
modulation. Chapter 9. We can assume that tonality is a function of the fundamental tone, the tonic. That is, everything that makes up tonality emanates from that tone and refers back to it. What he's talking about? Emanates from that tone, everything that makes up the tonality emanates from that tone and refers back to it. What he's talking about? Let me translate the word emanates. Comes from emanates is it's it, 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 it mm, emanate uh, it comes See. from but it it it's like for example the the overtone series are like emanated from the first mm -hmm. overtone the fundamental tone yeah. Well, actually, I I erased I, I responded myself <laughs> because I <laughs> it, it 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 yeah it refers to overtones yes so everything happens from there but even though it does refer back that which emanates from the tone has a life of its own within certain limits so all the chords. Yes, that emanate from that tonic has a life of its own, but it is dependent to the yes tonal center. Yeah, that's why it's with certain limits. It is dependent, but to a certain degree also independent. What is closest to the fundamental has the most affinity with it. What is more remote, less affinity. If roaming over the domain of the fundamental, we follow the traces of its influence, we soon reach those boundaries where the attraction of the tonal center is weaker, where the power of the ruler gives way and the right of self-determination of the half-free can, under certain circumstances, provoke upheavals and changes in the constitution of the entire structure. He, he, he's always talking about the, the tonality as a domain, a sovereignty, a king, yes, like a power. Of such regions whose behavior is now neutral, now um, revolutionary, two are to be distinguished. The dominant region and the subdominant region. Also because he has, I don't know if you remember, but even in the first chapters, yes, uh, he clearly states as a pool, yes, you have a tonic, the tonic chord, you have the dominant, five notes up from that tonic, and an equidistant, and an equidistant distance from that tonic, yes, five notes down or, or seven semitones, or perfectly down, actually, you have the subdominant, and those are kind of the pillars on which, yes, the, the key uh, establishes itself. And that's why we have tonic family, dominant family, subdominant family, and that's why he, has, he says regions. Yes, because within the region you have, for example, the tonic family or the tonic region is not just one chord, it's the tonic, the median, the sub -median. Yeah. And the dominant family is the dominant and the leading tone, or chord. And the subdominant family or subdominant region is the subdominant itself and the supertonic. So that's why you have, it says it's regions, yeah? It is not possible to define this precisely, for there are even ever strong reference to the fundamental and the force of their own instincts which creates cross-references between the two regions as well, manifests relationships whose graphic representation in two dimensions would not be possible. So about that, he has a, he says, um, it is considered reference to the fundamental and uh, the force of their own instincts, in German, of course, 
One indivisible subject, on the other hand, we could assume error that Assange is questionable, however, for the first or single first edition, blah, blah, blah. So basically, uh, the translator is saying that he doesn't understand what he said. Uh, <laughs> but in a way. Um, so there's a graphic, I don't, I really, uh, e even me, yeah. I mean, I, bah, even me, but not because I'm very super smart, really. That's very far from the truth. But when it says two dimensions, I am not sure what he's talking about. I don't know if you know, but when I even when I read, it's like why two dimensions? Why what will be the first dimension and the third dimension to talk about? That's the second dimension. Is there a third dimension that is? Is he talking about a plane and two dimensions of, you know, the dot? And then he's talking about the three dimensions. What is he talking about? Yeah. Space. So that is... Actually, that's my question to you. Also. Maybe we can find it together. And he says... It is not possible to define this precisely for their ever strong reference to the fundamental and the force of their own instincts, the fundamental, and then all the courses are related to the fundamental. They have what I understand of it. Yes, they have their own life of its own, always refer to the fundamental tonic. Yes. And remember that we are building a system. It's made up as well. Yeah which creates cross-references between the two regions as well, so dominance and dominant, yeah? Cross-references. Um, this is, uh, I lost myself. I lost myself. Cross-reference between the two regions as well, manifests relationships whose graphic representation in two dimensions will not be possible. I think he means that he cannot draw it. Well, he did in the first chapter. That's why I don't understand. <laughs> I mean... But the, the reference to the fundamental. Do you remember the first chapter when he has a C, an F, and an G? Yes, and that pool. Not all the references, because such a representation would at least produce a line doubling back on itself. Like a line, I think he means a literal line would need to be another on top of it, another, so it would be impossible. We would need three dimensions to see clearly what you have. He could be. He could be. I, I mean, can't imagine what he's thinking. No, no, he, I, I have, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel a little bit better with myself because even the, the translator <laughs> said, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't understand what he's talking about. So, I feel a little bit better with myself, a little bit, yeah. So it's such a representation would at least produce a, a line doubling back to itself. I mean, when you have these poles, let's say, yes, to the tonic, uh, which branch off, however, forming traffic arteries from every point in all directions. I mean, let's say that you have, you know, the these cross relationships between chords yes although you always return to the tonic and it's all cross reference to the tonic yeah yes when you have for example let's say you're going to go to this subdominant region yes and then you maybe you have the submedian the subdominant yeah the supertonic yes you can you cannot go i mean back and forth so immediately to the tonic but in a way, they're all connected, yes? And for me, I think that the, the, the most important um, thing to remember is that we establish, yes, per, is, is, per, is with a purpose, yes? When we compose music, there's a system and then we follow it, but as we create it, yes? And when also when you analyze, you have to see if the composer is, is how strongly he's establishing or she's establishing a, a gravitation around that. Yes. The more you the more you spend time in the tonic and the dominant, let's say, the stronger the stronger you're going to establish a key and the strong is the pull. 
if you go to other regions and then you linger on in those regions, you're weakening, let's say, yes, the, your gravitational center. But the, more important, the most important thing is that you are creating that. You have to create it. It's not going to be created by itself. Yeah? Because it's a, it's a made-up system, let's say, that we, yeah, uh, we create. So, carry on. Nevertheless, the definition of the two regions may be approximated as follows. To the subdominant region belong the fourth, yeah, the subdominant, and its alternate, the supertonic, the second, yes. To the dominant region, the dominant, or the fifth, and the degree resemble it, the third. He thinks, yes, let's think about that. Relatively not neutral in their behavior are the sixth and the seventh, which can alternatively belong to either region or can lead from one to the other one. When he talks about regions, is is very interesting. I mean, the way that he describes the fourth and the two is very simple. Okay. If, if we think about C major, F major, D minor. Yeah, they belong to the same region. The, the alternate is second. Why? Because if you think about F major, F, A, and C, and D minor, D, F, and A, F and C, F and A, sorry, of the F major chord, okay, F and A, the root and the third, are the same, yes, root and the third are the most important notes of a chord, and they are in D minor. Yes, you have the root, F and A, and also because you move a third down, yes, it's very strong. And then the dominant, you resemble to the third, again, a third down. It doesn't go a third up to the seventh, which w we would say, well, but it's, it's more logical because it has, you know, at least it's, it's, it has a leading tone. But it, the way that he connects the, the regions is by the movements of the roots, which he considers to be a third down, which is the strongest, yeah? That's why the fifth, when you connect regions, okay, when I say regions because you linger on those chords, maybe later on we're going to see how long can you linger on, yeah? Relatively neutral, the behavior is six and seventh. If you think about from four to, four to six, it's a third up, yes? F major to A minor. And then the same thing, G dominant, yeah, uh, the G major to the seventh, yeah, seventh, which is B seven, B diminished, a third up, which we know that the movement, let's say, is not as strong, it's weaker. More or less clear? Yeah? Laura? Thus, for example, the progression uh, 3-6 creates a possibility of crossing over to 4 or 2 to 7th of crossing over to 3rd. And 2 to the alternate of 4th, the, the dominant, leads into the dominant region if 5 follows it. But the dominant leans more towards the 3rd or the 1st tonic than towards the second or the fourth. And the fourth more towards the second or the seventh than towards the fifth. All of these, fourth and fifth, the two chief representatives of their respective regions have the strongest mutual aversion and relatively speaking next to the tonic, the stronger wills in the whole district. This is about district. Yeah. Let's go on a little bit more yeah, to explain this, what he just said. To establish boundaries in a district where there are so many interchanges may be futile, a futile undertaking. 
for the distinctions in the tendencies and effects are perhaps too subtle. But in spite of all interchanges, the boundaries, the distinctions, do exist even if finally drawn. And recognizing them is useful, as will be shown later. What is important for us at the moment is to recognize how, when the affinity of the secondary triads with the fundamental diminishes, certain harmonic progressions are made possible whose reference back to the fundamental has to be established by special means. It is important for us to recognize that in, in tonality there are regions that will remain neutral so long as they are forced to do so. But that, as soon as the rule of the fundamental is even momentarily relaxed, are ready to submit to the enticements of the neighboring tonality. This will be useful when we uh, know how to build the, the route, let's say the route, from one key to the other one. There are some chords that are more neutral than the other ones, if you move from C to G or C to F, let's say. I, my, all my examples are going to be in C major, okay? <laughs> all of them. So if you're in C and you go to G, you have certain chords that are more neutral. For example, a neutral chord would be between C major and G major. What do you think that you could have? Which chords do you think that they are more neutral between C major and G major. The ones without F. Exactly. A minor, E minor. Yes. And very quickly, look, also, let's think about this. Because this is one of the things that we have to have very, very clear. Yes. It's an exercise. You have seven, seven chords in each scale. You know that. If you change one note, in the case of the F sharp, yes, to C major, G major, yeah? Seven chords, seven chords. If you change one note, that note will, mm, let's say, influence or change three chords. Why? Because one note always can be the root, the third and the fifth of three different chords. So, if the change of F, yes, which is the, I mean, the, the, the chords, which are the chords that they are they going to be affected by F sharp in G major? You mean the A, B, C, D or one, two, three, four? When you say one, two, three, four, wait. The first degree, the second degree. Ah, the hey, the, whatever. The degree, degree is better, actually, yeah. So the second of C will become the dominant of G. The seventh of C will become the third of G. And the fourth of C will become the seventh of G. Yes. There you go. Fantastic. So the and is now let's go to let's see an example. So the F sharp, yes, will be the the root note of the seventh of the seventh, the F sharp diminished, which is the seventh. It will be the third of the fifth, the dominant, the major, and it's going to be the fifth of the uh, third degree median B minor. So B minor, D major. F, F sharp diminished, yes, or the third, this fifth, and the seventh. You see that they go by thirds. Good. The three, five, seven. Good. Perfect. So if you know that you have seven chords and then three, you cannot use it, how many <laughs> do you have left? Four. Yes. So Yes, if you move from, from one, one key to the other one, neutral chords, yes, that those chords are going to um, are going to be our uh, common chords or the basically the bridge 
in a modulation, in a future modulation, are going to be those ones. Yes? Let's see. It is. If we used to are in C major and we want to go to F major, which, first of all, which is the note that we have, um, which is accidental that we have in F major, we don't have in C major? B flat. Exactly, very good. So B flat is going to be in, I mean, in three chords. Mm -hmm. Going to be the root, the third, and the fifth. Good. Which are those chords? So, talking in F major, right? Yes, 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 of course. So, yes. it's going to be the fourth chord. Yes, the subdominant. And the... Um, the <laughs> wait, ah, the seventh. The seventh, yes, and it has to be, the, you, you quote, you quoted, the, the B flat as a root, the subdominant, yep. the B flat as a, as a fifth in the seventh, and we need the third. I mean, we need the B flat being the third. I said the second chord. Oh, the... sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear. Good. <laughs> Very good. So you have the um, second, the fourth, yes, and the seventh. Fantastic. Okay. Yes, very good. Beautiful. Which are the chords that remain? Which are the chords that they are neutral from F major to C major? So, the third. The... Um, this C one, this one that is also is, is, is very important. Before the third. If you go in order. Mm -hmm. One. Yes, the tonic. F major is the dominant of, of C major. So F major, yeah, tonic. The the third, the median, A minor, very good. The sixth. Before that? The fifth. The fifth, <laughs> which is the fifth of the F major dominant is the tonic of C major. Yes, fantastic. The sixth, exactly, very good. D minor is the sixth of F major, second or supertonic of C major. Yes, yeah, so... These chords are the neutral ones, the ones that we should use more to change. To the Those chords called the neutral ones are going to be the bridge. Okay. Yes, in from one key to the other key. But first we have to know this concept, yes? Of course we always, I, I always make C major because there's no point Yes, in make an example of, you know, D flat major, let's see. <laughs> I mean, we can't do that, but <laughs> to understand the concepts, yes, those are the neutral. First of all, it's the, the basic thing. You have seven chords, you have one note, yes, if you go one fifth up, your, your neighbors, yes, because also in the circle of fifths, yes, you, you're going to have, we call safe areas. If you start in C major, G and, and, and F, and then the corresponding minors that will come later, that's your safe area. You have six keys, yes? But if you're in one key, yes, that you know that every key has seven chords, let's see how you move, yes? Let's see what you have in common, yes? If, if you have one note that is not common, it's not just one note, are three chords. If you have seven chords, three you cannot not you cannot use it, but as as soon as you use them, you tell I'm not in that key. Let's say you're in C major. And then you start to build like a ambiguity. Yes, to go to G. So you're going to start using A minor and E minor, yes. Let's say, for example. Yeah, C major itself, yeah. But as soon as you put D major with a F sharp, we know we left. Yes, that's not neutral. Yes, that's why. And those chords are going to be pivot chords. Yes, very good. So that's uh, 
we're going to end up here yes because i just wanted to 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 have this 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 concept right of the regions remember the, He's talking about regions. Review the, those regions again. Yes, if you have tonic, dominant, subdominant, yes, and each one you have a related region which is a third down from them. That is the close, closely related region, and then you have a region that is not that strongly related, which is a third up, and they're interconnected. Why is that? If you're in C major, yes, and the strongest related region is A minor, because it's a third down. But if you're in a subdominant, your weaker, I mean, there's a region that is not so, you know, weak, not strongly related, which is A minor, which is a third up. That is the one, yes. That's why he says, like arteries, that they correlate to each other, yes? Because these things are going to be very important when you start modulating, when you start going around keys, yes? Another example, G major, strongly related to third down to E minor, third. But C major, it has a not strongly related E minor because it's a third up, same chord. Okay? Perfect. Fantastic. Next time, I mean, it's going to be a long chapter, but it's very fun, yes? Um, because it's when we start, um, well, having adventures outside the key. Yeah? Very good. Fantastic.